What's happening guys? This is Speedy Spectrum and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Stadium 2. In the last episode, we defeated Lieutenant Surge and Erica, bringing our gym leader defeat total to 4. But we still have 4 more gym leaders to defeat, so let's get to it. Starting things off, we are going to head to the Fuchsia Gym which is led by not Koga, but his daughter, Janine, since Koga is now a member of the Elite Four. Janine is the, the easiest of the Kanto gym leaders to defeat in Gold, Silver, and Crystal, and that remains true here. All right, Janine, show me what you got. My Pokémon are masters of poisonous moves, and she is not joking. Much like her father, she's also packing a ton of poison. So I hope you have come with some Miracle and Poison Cure berries. I'm going to lead off with Houndoom in order to deal with Fortress and Meganium, as well as Girafferig. Mewtwo should come in handy for taking down Muk, Crobat, and Vaporeon. So in theory, I should only need those two, but I'll bring Marowak just in case. The opponent this time is Janine of Fuchsia Gym. She inherited her outstanding battle smart from her father, Koga. Let's see if the challenger Pokemon can withstand being poisoned here. She might be Koga's daughter, but the battle with her is going to end just the same way as it did with him, I'm sorry to say, as she's leading off with Vaporeon, which is a water type holding a bright powder with the moves Surf, Ice Beam, Baton Pass, and Double Team. Right off the bat, I'm going to need to switch out to Mewtwo. The only way Vaporeon can legitimately Please learn Baton okay. Pass in Gen that 2 is through Crystal. Right You'll want to oh, take this thing out quickly that. before it can pass its, pass its evasion boosts onto another member of her team. And she's going to be annoying right ah, off the bat. I have my doubts that a single Thunderbolt will KO Vaporeon because it is rather bulky. I am faster than it, but that's really the only advantage I have. Ooh, a critical hit certainly helps! Unfortunately, it didn't quite knock it out. But wow, to think that I reduced it down to a mere 8 HP! Nice! And it managed to survive, which shows you just how good Vaporeon's defenses are. And now the missing starts. Hooray. Makes me wish that I had Swift. But alas, I do not. I also wish I had Haze on one of my Pokemon. That would really come in handy. But there's really nothing I can do about these double teams. Oh, yes! Three double teams mean nothing to the almighty power of Mewtwo. With Vaporeon gone, her next Pokemon is going to be Meganium. Meganium is a grass type holding a quick claw with the moves Toxic, Attract, Leech Seed, and Razor Leaf. This thing having a track means that I want to keep out Mewtwo. If I know Janine, she's probably going to use Toxic as her first move. This Meganium is all about draining your HP and gradually lowering it with a combination of both Toxic and Leech Seed. So you'll want to get rid of it quickly before it can set up. Remember, Meganium's got pretty good defense. Case in point, the Ice Beam didn't one-shot it. But one more Ice Beam should do the trick. It's also relatively slow being a grass type. Keep in mind, the Trico evolutionary line didn't exist yet, so we did not we had not yet had very many 
fast grass Pokemon. In fact, I'm not sure there was one. Just one Pokemon remains. Last Pokemon is going to be Crobat. Poison flying Pokemon. type, holding a King's Rock uh, with the moves Toxic, Bite, Mean Look, and Confuse Ray. Crobat is quick with a capital Q. It's got absolutely insane speed, and it's packing a pretty irritating moveset, I have to admit. Because it can poison you, it, it'll trap you, and then it'll confuse you, which means you'll have to risk the confusion. And speaking of confusion, I'm gonna have to risk that now. Then again, I think I might be better off switching out to Houndoom. Because I am predicting a mean look attack from this Crobat, and I don't want to get trapped while I'm confused. Despite the fact that Houndoom is out and about, I will not be able to outspeed this Crobat. It is just that quick. It's probably one of my favorite Pokemon design-wise. The fact that it's got four wings makes it look like a vampire bat. And would you stop confusing me, please? I find that to be quite impolite. And I find that to suck! The fact that I keep hitting myself. Uh, I think I'm gonna switch back to Mewtwo. Because once again, I am predicting a mean look. And Mewtwo is definitely a better match uh, for this Crobat than Houndoom is. It doesn't really matter, because if I can just get one good attack off of this Crobat, I'll be golden. Wow, I'm actually faster than Crobat! Okay, I didn't expect that to happen, but I'm sure glad it did! Later, Crobat! Can't say I'm gonna miss ya! Overall, Janine proved to be really simple. Didn't give me much trouble at all. So I still stand by the statement that she is the easiest of the Kanto gym leaders. Aren't you something? Where did you train? I trained far, far away. On a dojo! In New Barktown. Okay, part of that might have been ad-libbed, but I don't care! I'm moving on to the next gym leader. Now it is time for us to square off in the Saffron Gym against Sabrina, the master of psychic Pokemon. And that's all right, because I have a psychic killer in Houndoom. Round six, here we go. Psychics aren't flashy, but they are terrifying nonetheless. Now I'm getting flashbacks to the anime where Sabrina was easily the most terrifying character. And if you guys have seen those episodes, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. She turns Brock, Misty, and Ash into dolls with psychic power, and it's rather disturbing, I have to say. Because Sabrina uses psychic Pokemon, Houndoom is the natural choice for a leadoff. I will also bring Mewtwo, so I can use Ice Beam against that Sand Slash, as well as Thunderbolt in case Slowking shows up. And for backup, let's bring Kingdra, just in case she sends out Typhlosion. This battle is against Sabrina of Saffron Gym. Will the challenger's Pokémon be sharp enough to avoid being baffled by her psychic Pokémon? Right now, I'm quite bedazzled by this arena. I mean, it's see-through. It looks like we are literally floating in the air. How appropriate, given the gym leader has the ability of telekinesis. Uh, she's leading off with Slowking. Uh, which is a Water and Psychic type, holding a Quick Claw with the moves Surf, Psychic, Earthquake, and Future Sight. We all know Slowking has some pretty good defenses. It's a lot more aggressive than Slowbro oh, is, okay. however. So the attacks are going to hit a little bit harder. Oh, Mewtwo's Mewtwo. Thunderbolt should prove instrumental in getting rid of this Slowking. I Here, thought it was going to use Surf. 
shouldn't deal much damage to Mewtwo. Ah, unless it gets a critical. Well, I'm going to have to use Recover, and I know I'm faster than it. So that was a minor setback, but I think I should still be all right. It's going to go for another Surf. So it's perfectly content on using stab moves. I think just to be safe, I'm... Well, actually, no, I'm going to hit it with Thunderbolt. It only has Psychic and Future Sight as far as... Uh, oh! Turnabout is fair play! And it's survived with 1 HP! Come on, game! Why can't you cut me a little bit more slack? I mean, the slow can survive with one freaking hit point! Let's use Thunderbolt and get rid of it once and for all. I hope this isn't an omen of things to come, because... Yeah, I'm gonna need Mewtwo for this fight. Definitely. Alright, Slowking is down, and Pokemon number two is going to be... Alakazam! Alright then, Alakazam is a Psychic type, holding a King's Rock with the moves Psychic, Fire Punch, Future Sight, and Thunder Punch. This thing is a straight up sweeper. I have used Alakazam multiple times throughout this playthrough. I don't need to tell you how utterly savage it is. It is extremely powerful to be certain, and it can utterly sweep you if you are unprepared. Its special defense is also nothing to sneeze at. That Ice Beam didn't nearly do as much damage as I thought it would, but thankfully Mewtwo has uh, the special defense to uh, resist most of its attacks. But since it's running low on HP, I think now is the time for Houndoom to come in for the kill. It can't hit me with Psychic. Fire Punch is ineffective. The only attack it can really use against Houndoom is Thunder Punch. And it's going to go for the Fire Punch again, not too worried about that. I think it is faster than I am, so I am going to go for a Crunch. Yes, it is faster. I can only hope I'm not paralyzed, and thankfully I wasn't. The Thunder Punch didn't really do all that much damage either. So if this Crunch is strong enough... Yes, it is! Down goes the Alakazam! We've taken down Slowking, we've taken down Alakazam, she only has one more Pokemon. And said Pokemon is going to be... Scizor! Well, this should be a nice matchup. Scizor is a Bug and Steel type, meaning it's got a quad weakness to fire. It's holding a Miracle Berry with the moves Slash, Reversal, Metal Claw, and Light Screen. Scizor is a pretty dang good physical attacker, and if you don't have a fire Pokemon, then it can be quite tough to take down. Metal Claw is packing some decent power, and it's also got Light Screen to resist uh, special attacks, but if you can use a powerful fire type move, it's not going to stand a chance. Case in point. Well, Sabrina was certainly tougher than Janine was, uh, and there were parts of that battle that did make me sweat, but overall, I think we did well. Not a bad performance in the slightest. Psychic power isn't infallible. Ah, uh, you should rely on friendship and trust instead of psychic power. Although, I guess you could argue the fact that your psychic power is a form of trust between you and your Pokémon. Anyway... We've defeated Sabrina, and next time on Let's Play Pokemon Stadium 2, we are going to take on Blaine and Blue, the two remaining gym leaders of the Kanto Gym Leader Castle. See you guys next time.